Hi, welcome to the Craft Channel. My name's Corin Brad, and if you sew quite a lot like me, you'll find that you have multiple pairs of scissors scattered around the house. So I've got a nice project for you today to help keep the tips protected. And um, it's just something nice to make out of leftover fabric. And they're scissors cases. Um, there'll be a template in the description below for all three sizes. So whether you've got needlework scissors, um, a pair of, what blade is this? These are about 20 centimetres long. And these are dressmaking scissors, which are about 30 centimetres long. And there's also a snap fastener loop to stop them falling out of their case if you're in transit. So I'll just clip that back on there. Pop them to one side. And what you'll need from the template is two pieces of right size together fabric, and I've used contrast fabric here. And when you're cutting out your template, you want to add your a five or six mil seam allowance around the outside. If you've ever watched any of my other demonstrations, I tend to draw around this template onto my fabric and then cut out with the seam allowance. And what you also want to do is you just want to make a little mark here, which is where the other half of the template matches up. So once you've done that, if you also cut one piece from wadding, and then you need to zigzag stitch all the way around the outside just to bind that wadding to your fabric. So if you set your machine to a zigzag, um, it's only a temporary fix, so you don't need a particularly tight zigzag. And just pop it in so it goes right over the edges. So you've got a bound edge and you know it's not a necessary step but it does stop your layers shifting around while you're working on them. What you also need to do is you need to cut yourself another strip of fabric. Now this one is four and a half centimetres wide for some random reason by 11 centimetres long and if you sew down Oh, set your machine back to a straight stitch. Sew down the long edge after you've folded it right sides together lengthways. And across one short end. You don't need to worry about the other short end because that's going to be hidden within a seam. But you do just need to turn this the right way out with a piping term, turner or something similar. And then use a knitting needle just to push the corners of that out quite neatly. I'll just finger press that for now. I'm going to give it a proper press in a minute. But what you need to do before you go any further is you need to remember to insert this on the top edge, the top curve of your scissors case. So if you just lay it there 
I'll pop a little pin in there to keep it in place while I lay the other piece of fabric right sides, to, right sides together on top. And I'm just going to pin that at that join. And here. Let's put a pin through all of those layers where I've attached the piece of piping and take that pin out before I forget. And then I'm going to sew all the way along this front edge and around the curve to that mark. So again, a straight stitch, normal 5mm seam allowance. Stop where that angle is, leave your needle in to lift the foot and pivot it. Chuck your pin across the table. When you get to where your strap is attached, it's worth just going over it and back and over it again, just to hold it secure. And then just work down to that mark. And then before you go any further, just check that that seam that you have stitched is inside your line of zigzags, so that when you turn it the right way out, you don't see the zigzag stitching. And you just need to clip this angle here, And then you want to turn out your curved part, like so. And then all you need to do is join these pieces up. So we'll do the padded bit first. Make sure that the flap or that the back part of your scissors case is out of the way. And match up where you've stopped the seam at the mark. Match it up to the join on the other side. And you'll notice what I've done with these cases is they've got a flat bottom to them. Um, that's really because it's a bit of a nightmare trying to pull out the point. I mean, it wasn't quite so bad on this needlework scissors case. But um, in order to make your life easier, just give it a little flat bottom. So stitch across your flat bottom. And straight up this long seam. right up to where the two fabrics join. And just stop. If you're in any doubt, stop one stitch before the join. Now you've sewn the padded part, you can tuck all those bits inside and just sew the unpadded part in exactly the same way, except I'm going to leave a gap in the seam about halfway down so that you can turn it out. So again, we'll start here where the two pieces join.
And when you're doing a reverse stitch, it's worth counting how many stitches forward you came before you go back to make sure you're still in the same place. Run it down about halfway. And fasten it off. Start again about four centimeters down. And run to the end of the seam and across the bottom. And then if you pop, well, you know when you think, have I left a big enough turning gap? Well, we'll soon find out. Pop your fingers inside the turning gap and pull that padded section through. Now I'm not going to worry too much about pushing out this inside bit too well because I'm just going to turn it back inside out. But what I do want to do is just make sure that the bottom of the end of the case on the outer fabric is pushed out fully. Oh, there you go. Just take it easy and use like a largish knitting needle because the worst thing is when you're pushing out something and then your needle goes straight through it. You have to turn it inside out again to restitch it. Um, just tuck that inside for now and then just give a quick press around this top seam. just to give it a nice, smooth curve. Like so. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to top stitch all the way around this curve and this inner. And because Although you can normally take an accessory drawer off your machine, there's no way on earth that that's going to fit over the bed of your machine. So I find it's easiest to do it inside out almost. When you're doing something like that, just do it a little bit of a, t a little bit at a time. Flatten your fabric out, you know, about five, six centimeters worth of fabric. Sew a little bit of the seam, and then manipulate it, flatten it out again, sew a bit more of the seam. And just trim off your excess threads. 
Now, somehow, because I'm a bit of an idiot, I have managed to put that retaining strap on a different side to the ones that I made earlier. But actually, it doesn't really make an awful lot of odds. Because, oh, yes, obviously I've put my scissors in the wrong way around there. You put your scissors in either way so that you've actually got that handle. Um, before I worry about that, what you do need to remember is the fact that on your lining, you have got an open seam, which won't be seen, but chances are, if you're in a hurry, you'll end up piercing through the fabric or through the open seam with your scissors. So if you want it to be reversible, I don't know if it can be reversible really because of the, the snap fastener, um, you can just hand stitch this. Or if you're like me and permanently in a hurry, you can just fold in the raw edges and just zigzag stitch over the top of them. Before that you then pop it back inside the outer and uh, push it all the way down to the bottom with the point of a knitting needle. So there you've got your case and then to fit the fastener to it, if you pop your scissors in there, you know your handle, you've got plenty of room there. So actually, bring this over to about the halfway point, Just pop a little pin in there a sec, and mark through with a uh, stiletto. Find yourself some of these um, resin snap fasteners and pop one drawing pin piece with a, I want to put the male part on the strap. With these snap fasteners, you get male and female parts just like you do with poppers. So that's the male part and that's the female part. Pop that over the drawing pin. Grab your pliers. Make sure they're located properly and give them a good squeeze. And what that does is the pin in the middle of those pliers pushes down the drawing pin part into the middle of the uh, male section and flattens it and holds it in place. Do the same with the female. You want to just roll your fabric up a little bit to get it in there. Just give it a wiggle to check it's located and clamp it shut. And then you can pop your scissors inside, put the loop through the handle of the scissors and just attach it so that even in transit, if it's upside down, the blades of your scissors are not going to come out there and go through the bottom of your expensive leather handbag. So there you go. Easy little scissor case project made from a minimum fabric. And as I say, there'll be a template for you to download in the description below that will give you all the sizes of fat, uh, all the sizes of pattern that you need for different size scissors. Hope you enjoyed that. I hope you'll come back and see us again very, very soon. And I'd like even more if you would subscribe because we have lots of projects going up pretty much every week. Um, and we've got quite an extensive back catalogue now as well. So it'd be good to see you again. In the meantime, keep safe and thank you very much for watching. If you've been inspired to create, please share your makes with us in the comments section below. And if you've enjoyed videos by The Crafts Channel, hit the like button. Want to see more of us? Then click subscribe. See you next time.